What is one major thing that would make a cannon shooter buy the Sony a7S III? Let's talk about that today. Hey guys, I'm Rafael and welcome to the channel. I have a confession to make. I have shot with the Sony a7S II for years. I've actually shot with a whole bunch of Sony cameras, the F9s, the F7s, and the F5s. All great cameras. But I've personally enjoyed using the Canon cameras and have had them for the past decade. I used to work for a company that did lots of large live event work that required the low light capabilities of the a7S II. It handled the low light environments so well. The photo quality was terrible, so it was mainly our event video capture camera and the behind the scenes camera. No other camera could compete, period. Here's why this is so important in the live event space. When I was still in school, I did lots of wedding videos. And back then, there was no such thing as a low light camera. If the bride and groom wanted mood lighting at the reception hall, well, no luck. 1K redheads, no dimming, floodlights. Or as I like to call them, mood killers. There was no way to get nice, intimate, moody shots like this. The sensors just couldn't handle it. When I was working for the live event company, they did lots of holograms. So it was lots of light sensitive events. The light needed to be controlled for the audience to have the best possible experience. But we also found that regardless of the topic, almost every large event had lighting design that was moody and really crafted for the event. It was designed with the guest experience in mind. Lighting was for their eyes, not for the cameras. So much of our behind the scenes really benefited from the a7S II. It was HD, but nearly all the footage was usable. No other camera was able to give us this kind of performance. Nearly every time the organizers of the event and the speakers asked us for our footage because it looked so much better than they were able to get of the behind the scenes. We captured the event as close to how the guests experienced it. We had hundreds of hours of footage and I loved the camera for that. When I left the company in the large event space, for about six months, I didn't touch the A7S II because most of the captures I was working on was in controlled settings with controlled lighting. So I ended up getting rid of it. But I found as I started to do more work with the main cameras and starting this YouTube channel, I really missed the low light performance of the Sony, especially for the behind the scenes footage. I didn't know I would be considering buying another A7S. After Canon announced the R5, I felt happy to wait a bit, but eventually buy it when it ran through some serious testing and firmware updates. I want the R5 as my main photo camera and sometimes B-roll camera for the 4K slow-mo. I have all the lenses, I have the accessories. It's an easy decision for me. I knew it was coming and I sold my 1DX Mark II. Then a week later, Sony announced the A7S III and my goodness, this is the ultimate live event and behind the scenes video camera. I have decided to put the R5 on hold for the time being and get the Sony first. I see more value in this as a dedicated B-roll camera. The low light, 4K, slow-mo, no heating issues thus far and a new menu system because the old one was just wacky. I feel that the A7S III is the ultimate fix it in camera, camera. I have spent way too much time fixing the noise and the shadows from the EOS R and really had to find the limit that I could push the camera before too much noticeable noise was introduced. Using denoising plugins takes way too much time to process, so I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. The A7S III is an ideal video camera for me because I already have the C200 and the EOS R that complement each other very well, especially for nicely well-lit shots that I can control the light. But for instances where I can't control the light, that's where I need to fill out my tool set. I'm mostly a Canon shooter, but I can't deny the value of the A7S III. And because I have the Metabones adapter, I can use all my lenses. At this point, it's a must for me. And that's because I've already worked with the A7S II. I've already seen how well the A7S II worked in these run and gun scenarios. The 12 megapixel sensor for photos will still be pretty much unusable for most of my work, but in a pinch, definitely better than a phone camera. And if the photos are only going live online, Instagram, Facebook, or website, they'll probably work really well. I can't say that I was ever happy with the A7S II photos. They always felt low res for my taste. The EOS R will continue to be my main photo camera until I get the R5 with that huge sensor. I am not ready to fully transition all to Sony just yet. Regardless of which camera system you have, if you shoot any kind of live events, special events, corporates, weddings, or any behind the scenes, and you want the very best footage in these running gun scenarios, you should definitely consider the Sony a7S III. Sony has spent time to refine the camera to what it is today, and I'm glad that they pushed the tech forward. And I'll be getting this before I get the Canon R5. Let me know your thoughts. Are you considering the a7S III? Or is there another camera that's better for your workflow? As always, thanks for watching. Give me a big thumbs up, subscribe. I'm Rafael, I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.